Welcome to Dragon Trail Seaside for more super amazing stuff. This is a close race. Four of us battling. And the best view to watch it from is just here, following the Lotus Eater. He gets stuck into the side of a Supra, who is now out of the mix. He gets a bit of a wobble through here. I seize the opportunity to make a pretty decent overtake. But he gets a great run on the outside of the corner. We could go through here side by side, but I decide that would be exceedingly unwise. So he stays narrow. I get a better line through here. Still can't overtake, so give him a little bump draft. Clearly shaped to overtake on the inside. He leaves it open and goes for the cutback and pulls it off nicely. Mr. Gaffey is behind. Now I'm thinking, get the chicane of death right. Oh, I haven't done it very well, but I did do it better than the Lotus Eater. Let's have a little look at that from the cinematic angle where it looks pretty good. Lots of side-by-side -side stuff. Staying as close as I can in the S's. He does the cutback very well, not just here. The cutback being stay wide, break a little bit earlier, cut back and get inside your opponent accelerating a bit earlier than they do. How not to do the chicane of death, but not too badly. Mr. Gaffey tries to get in on the action here, but doesn't quite come off. Continuing from here, I am pretty keen, as always, not to help the opposition any more than is necessary, so I'm trying to break the toe. I manage that, and look at the difference the toe makes when the Gulf Porsche goes from Gaffy's toe to my toe, and then almost gets it done around the outside. Meanwhile, the Viper got stuck as soon as he pulled out of my toe. So, worth doing. I'm just trying to stay on the line here because it's difficult to get by if you're on the line taking the fastest route. The action happens in the next braking zone. Loving the Gulf livery by the way. Enjoyed McLaren turning out in the Gulf livery at, at Monaco. Thought the car looked great. I hold the inside, force him to the outside. He does the cut back again, breaks early, comes inside. Now, I rough up Mr. Gaffey in the Viper here, but I didn't know where he was. And that was why I hit him twice. <laughs> I didn't think he was there. I, th I think he understood that. He didn't, he didn't drive like a man who was annoyed. Unfortunately, the Lotus Eater Porsche now gets away. Mr. Gaffey's got the run on me. I let him go around the outside if he can get that done, which he pretty much does, but he runs a little wide, leaves us battling down the straight. I tuck into the slipstream. He defends his line, doesn't want me coming up the inside. He slightly overcooks it on the brakes, slips off, and I get by and hold that position in fourth to the end. Before we slip on to the next race, let's just have a look at the Lotus Eater's rather dastardly first corner. He could have lifted off here if he'd wanted to. 
but he didn't and I can sort of understand it. It does mess your race up, but you obviously undoubtedly would never dream of doing this if it was real motorsport, but as there are no consequences, the temptation is there. Right, this is, this is a serious dice, lots of action, a, uh, a race of two halves with uh, some shenanigans in the middle. Starting 10th, getting a bit out of shape there, and then I'm out of shape on the exit, get a bit of a tank slapper on and tap Luca B by accident while the tail wags. Hold 10th. And if we skip forward to the same place in the next lap, you will see that in fact I moved from 10th to 6th. But how did that happen? Well, the chicane of death is involved, but not in the way you would think here. This car is, has been mesmerized by the advertising. He wants to pause and consider how many Maxwell batteries he should buy. And he stays there for such a long time that many people pass him or her. Now, keep your eye on the yellow Supra there. He is a victim of circumstance. Exiting the gene pool. On the way down here, we have some fairly wild change of directions from Molly, which leads to the unfortunate Cusquito being rocketed off the track. We've got this guy. That is a poor overtake for which he gets no penalty. But he did get a penalty for something he did earlier quite how nefarious it was I don't know but as he comes around here he has to take his penalty and the world goes by so the penalty system sort of working there I'm much happier with the penalty system the way it is and I get down the inside of Molly at the exit of this set of S's unfortunately this is when the shenanigans begins. I don't think it was intentional. It was just high speed, couple of accidental nudges, people locking up, and I got absolutely T-boned against the wall. So from sixth, having worked from 10th to sixth, all the hard work is undone as I plummet to, to a lowly 12th. But there is always the chicane of death. And by the time I come out of the chicane of death, I've already made up two places. People again removing themselves from the gene pool by means of bouncing off the armco barriers. Whizzing further forward, I've got some serious heat from the yellow Supra. I protect my line. He doesn't try the outside, he tries to get a decent exit, and he's still got a lot of pressure on. Molly, with her penalty, soaking up the pressure, and, and suddenly I'm, I'm in eighth. So two more spots, fall my way. This time, it's people getting out of shape on this curb, running wide, losing control. Two of them at the same time. Gifting JSR 52 eighth spot, but it's not over. Can't quite see that name, but I'm gonna call them Valderrama after the Colombian footballer. So the Colombian footballer putting us under serious pressure here. I take the chicane of death pretty poorly, and as often happens, if you take it quite poorly, the person behind, if they're really close, struggles to take it well themselves. That opened up a little gap from which there was no return. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and have a think about subscribing.